I hope y'all are doing well. This is Kim Danke coming to you live from the Shibboleth Studios in Kennesaw, Georgia. And today we are going over day one of your seven day fast track. This is a fast track program that helps all of our new members get on the right foot in just one week. So this is going to be both live on Facebook and it will be recorded in the Zoom room. If you are on the chat, which, hey, Danielle, Danielle's on the chat. With If you're typing in the chat, if you don't mind, please type in uh, or set your chat to all panelists and attendees. All panelists and attendees. Because some people, if you ask a question, may have that question as well. If you are on here, please let me know if you are here for a refresh or if you're brand new and where you're from. Hey, Roni, how are you? I saw Roni at class yesterday. She came to Cartersville. So it looks like I've got Belinda and Crystal and Meredith and Roni and Sarah and Timothy and Vivian on here. And Danielle. Awesome. I always give it three minutes for everybody to get logged on because some people don't know they need the Zoom app when they first get on here. So I'll give that to two more minutes. Meredith is brand new from Northeast Alabama. You from the Huntsville area? And we've got Tim and Holly Brady. Okay, from Kathleen and they're brand new. Awesome, well, welcome. Okay, Crystal is from Saudi Daisy, Tennessee. I know we've got a nice support group for you up there. That's gonna be awesome. Just to let y'all know, you can start support groups wherever you are. You don't have to have a teacher. You just got to be willing to get together and uh, talk to Bolith and support each other. Looks like I've got 10 people on here right now. There were 40 registered. I know not everybody joins when they register, but we're going to give it one more minute and then we're going to get started. Sarah from Smyrna, awesome. Very good, I'm glad you're here. Sarah, are you new or are you wanting a refresh? And it is new, okay, awesome, awesome. Well, y'all have found the right spot, okay? Because what we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna go over, hey, Ginger, hey, how are you? Okay, you should, and Belinda should have two people that joined. Tammy and Bo, hello, Becky. Awesome, I'm glad y'all are on here. That is fantastic. So tonight, what we are gonna go over is we're gonna go over the program overview because when you are learning something new, you kinda just need to know the basics in what to do. So tonight is the program overview, the basics. Um, it's going to be how you're going to do this. Now you gotta come up with why you're gonna do this. Why you're going to do this is just as important as how you're going to do it, but the how is also extremely important. If you have not watched the 14 little videos yet that are called the um, fast track videos, it takes less than one hour to watch them, less than one hour, and video 13 talks about you coming up with your why, why you are going to do this, and I think one of the absolute best reasons that you can do this is one for your family the people inside of the four walls of your home, and that includes you if you are living by yourself, okay? This is the most important thing because the better you can be for them, then it just, it just goes out from there. It goes from your home to your work, to your church, your community, and, and so forth, okay? So, um, but do it for your health, do it to feel better. There's so many reasons to do this. My little story is this. I found Shibboleth last year when I got on the scale one morning and I said, you know what? You are a half a pound from your highest adult weight. You got to do something about that. So my friend had been posting about Shibboleth on Facebook and I decided to go call her and she told me what she was doing. Basically though, she said that she'd lost 86 pounds in six months. And I said, Ooh, that sounds good. I didn't have 86 pounds to lose, but um, but it still sounded great, and she was excited about it, and it made sense. 
So I wanted to lose 35 and a half pounds because I wanted to get to 150. I started off at 185.5 and I wanted to get to 150. I lost those 35 and a half pounds in three months, three months. And then I went into our maintenance program and in our maintenance program, I lost another 15 pounds for a total weight loss of 50 pounds. And I didn't even know I had 50 pounds to lose. But basically to me, what that just says is the program works. We just need to work the program. And then the reason that we have better success than a lot of other people is because we put together several secrets of weight loss all into one. And we're going to go over what those are. But welcome to Shibboleth. My name is Kim Danke. Here's some things that you can text to this number, 31996, to get notifications. If you don't get this down right now, you can take a screenshot on your phone if you wanted to. But if you don't get this down right now, it will be in a post this week for you to be able to do that. You'll be notified of when I send out a text or when Travis does or when Jason does, and you'll be informed. There is no lack, no lack of us attempting to help you understand the program and help you stay on track in doing the program. But the parts and pieces that you have to do is you have to dig in and you have to participate and hopefully it'll be fun and great for you to do that and then you're going to be so um, happy with your results that you're going to want to have nothing you're just going to have everything that you can do with this program and lifestyle if you have never liked our shibboleth public page on facebook please do that because i go there live every morning monday through friday um, and it's always going to be before 8 a.m. Typically, it's about 7.30, 7.40, and then I go 15, 20 minutes. It'll always be over before 8 o'clock in the morning. But if I have to be somewhere really early, I could be on there an hour earlier. But you'll get notifications that Shibboleth has gone live if you at least like the public Facebook page, okay? All right, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started. Before I get started, I'm going to see who has commented on Facebook. All right, yes, Danielle. Okay, Danielle's friend Norma is joining. That is awesome. Tammy is new, yay, good. Awesome. Hey, Kim. And then I see some other people, Bo and Belinda and Danielle. Awesome, that is fantastic, excellent. Okay, so I boil this down to the simplest bits of information that you need, the simplest bits, okay? There's only two modes in Chibola. You are either in weight loss mode or you're in maintenance mode. That's it. There's three differences between these two modes. One is the number of holidays that you could take in a month. So a holiday is a day where you are not meeting some component of the shibboleth shield. We're going to go over that in just a second. Um, and then the next thing is the difference between these two is how you can eat fruit. In weight loss, you must combine fruit in a way that controls insulin or you can use a little bit of fruit as a condiment. But in maintenance, you can use a serving of fruit as a snack by itself if you wanted to. So there's a difference there. And then the other, the last uh, difference between these two modes is your mindset. Hopefully by the time you get to maintenance, this is a mindset that this is something that you are doing forever. So therefore, you don't get back to a spot where you then have to trudge down the lane of weight loss again. Let's just trudge down the lane of weight loss this last time. Let's make it this last time that we get to our maintenance and then let's not have to do it again by embracing the lifestyle that it is, okay? So there's two modes in Shibola. And you can set that in your profile. You would set that in your profile. There are two types of days in Shibola. There's either a perfect day or a holiday. I want you to know that I do not call holidays cheat days or anything like that because you're really not cheating. Typically, a holiday is something that you have planned out special. It's a birthday. It is um, an anniversary. It's an actual holiday that's on the calendar. There are reasons to celebrate, and you can just do, do whatever you want to on that holiday, but it's not a cheat day. These perfect days, those are those days, those regular every day, Monday through Friday, or even Saturday and Sunday. It's those days that we need to be being perfect so that we can celebrate on that holiday. Sometimes I hear people say, well, how am I gonna stay perfect on my vacation? 
or how am I going to stay perfect on this? Those aren't the times we're suggesting that you stay perfect. You can, you most certainly can, but those aren't necessarily the times that you need to focus on being perfect. It's all those other days that you need to focus on being perfect. And there is like this middle of the road here. Let's just say, okay, an okay day. See, okay days got us to where we were and we need to turn around and go the other way. So we're either gonna have a perfect day where we're hitting every component of the shibboleth shield as we should, or we're having a holiday where we are not meeting some component of the shibboleth shield. Yes, and I see Julie on Facebook says she loves maintenance. I'm telling you what, I love maintenance too. And we're gonna go over that right now. And Julie says she lost the what, what she did the work and lost the weight. Boom. That's right. Hey, Amy. And my friend Amy Kerner is on there on Facebook too. That is awesome. So, in how many holidays are you allowed is everybody's big question. In weight loss, you are allowed up to six holidays in a calendar month if you want to use them. You don't have to use them, but you can use them. So up to six. Now, once you get into maintenance, there's up to 12 holidays in a calendar month. Think about that. 12 times 12 is 144. That's 144 holidays in a year that you could do really whatever you wanted to um, and still maintain the weight loss that you achieved, okay? Now, and you got to think about this, 144 holidays, that's way more than there's actual holidays on the calendar, okay? So that is quite generous, but as long as, long as you don't let your perfect days roll into or turn into okay days, and you'll maintain your weight loss. So once you are, when you're in weight loss, you get up to six holidays in a calendar month. I highly suggest that you plan those out when you think you want them. You don't have to take them on those days, but if you haven't thought about when you're gonna take them, you end up in a, maybe you took them all at the beginning of the month, and then you need one at the end of the month because you forgot to plan about going out of town. Or something like that. So I suggest that everybody on the first day of the month look at their calendar and determine when they're going to have their holidays. And then once you get into maintenance, 12 holidays in a month is great, but those other days need to be truly perfect days, not turning into okay days. And let's think about this. It wasn't our birthday each year. You know, it wasn't our birthday, it wasn't our anniversary, it wasn't our vacations and things like that that got us to a point where we needed to go back in the weight loss game. It wasn't those days, it was every other just regular day that was an okay day. So we need to either remain perfect or a holiday and we need to stick with our allowed number of holidays. My sticky is acting funny today, sorry about that. There are five components to a perfect day. Now we have something that we follow that is called the shibboleth shield, the shibboleth shield. There are five components to that shield. I filter every single decision I make on a day through this shield. It helps me live a perfect day, okay? So water, journaling, combining foods in a way that control insulin, portion control, and timing. So one through four must be hit in order to say you've had a perfect day in your journal. Number five is extremely important, but it is for optimization, but it is extremely important. And there's so many strategies to this one right here. But in the beginning, all we want you to do is start off simple. And then as you continue in this wonderful lifestyle, we do have advanced programs that you can do. But right now we're just learning the basics keeping it simple. It takes two perfect days to get into what we call EFB. EFB stands for efficient fat burning. Those are awesome letters. Now, before Shibboleth, I didn't know I could get my body ready and primed to efficiently burn fat. Now, you know what? You can burn fat and you can efficiently burn fat. Well, let's efficiently burn fat. That's what Shibboleth is all about. We are not struggling to lose this weight. We are going to efficiently lose this weight by applying the information that you're gonna to learn tonight. 
what I do need you to be is I need you to be an applier. Okay, so just jump in tomorrow and start applying. Do you know that I really feel like you could lose seven pounds in your first seven days? Let's say you start tomorrow. By that next Monday, I think you can have seven pounds gone like that or more, but seven is a really good average to look at, okay? Now, in your journal, when you mark your first perfect day, you're gonna get a green check in your timing chart that is in your uh, Shibboleth account on your website. Then you're gonna do on your day two, your, your second perfect day, you're gonna get a green check. Those two days is what it takes to get into EFB. The reason we need those two days is because insulin is probably running around in your body. It has to dissipate, it needs to go away. So two days of eating perfectly, all that will go away. The other thing that is leaving your body during that time is glycogen, which is sugars. So they are leaving your body. Your third perfect day, you'll mark a perfect day in your journal, but the icon that's gonna show up in your timing chart is a flame. You know you are efficiently burning fat at that point. Then your job is to string as many efficient fat burning days together as you can, okay? That is your job. Then guess what? A holiday, whether it is planned or unplanned, is coming, and you just have to promise yourself getting right back on those perfect days again, because this is what keeps this uh, program sustainable. It is sustainable because you don't have to just throw up your hands and give up completely. You can enjoy a few holidays, you can get back to your perfect days, which are just as enjoyable, just in a different way than a holiday, okay? Component number one of a perfect day is to drink half a gallon at a minimum of water up to one gallon, okay? So your minimum is 64 ounces, which is just four regular water bottles. Just get one down in the morning before you ever leave the house. Just get it down before you ever leave the house, and then you only got three more. So that is four water bottles, but your goal is a gallon. And let me tell you, if you are working on getting that gallon in, your mind, I mean, your mind, I said this as your mind, your mind and your tummy are going to be much more satisfied and it'll be much easier for you to make it in the beginning because sometimes, and I'm not going to lie to you, you can be hungry in the beginning, but being hungry is not necessarily a bad thing. We're just used to feeding ourselves. If our tummy does any little bit of growling or any movement at all, we're just used to feeding ourselves. But if we are trying to get those gallons of water in in a day, we're going to have a great, great success and feeling more satisfied. Component number two of a perfect day is to journal your food. This is so important. This is so, so important. You want to write down what you are eating. Now, here's a couple of reasons. One, if you write down what you're eating, you are making very mindful choices about what you are eating rather than eating mindlessly. I have thrown many a cookie into my mouth mindlessly over the years. I have thrown many a chip into my mouth mindlessly over the years, but now I'd be required to write that down. Well, that reminds me, oh yeah, I'm having a perfect day. I would not want to make that decision. I'm going to have that cookie or those chips or whatever it might be on a holiday. I'm not going to have it on my perfect day. And those are the things that we kind of work through. Also, sometimes Sometimes your day seems so long. Do y'all ever have those days where they just seem so long and you're wondering, why does this day seem so long? Some of those days, I, I can forget what I've had for breakfast. I can forget what I've had for lunch. And then when it comes to dinner or maybe why am I hungry? What have I done? You know, you need to look back at those things. Journaling what you've eaten is just very, very important. Also, Let's say you get on the scale one day and you're going, I had a perfect day yesterday. Why am I up on the scale a little bit? Well, that might have been that you ate something that was a little bit more starchy after four o'clock, or it might have been that you had some starchy bread at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You know, those, so those are those things that if you journal, you can then turn that into one of our awesome, awesome mentors, and they can review your journal. If you're not journaling, we can't give you that feedback that you need. And then after journaling for a while, if you ever have a question and you get to look back, you'll know, oh yeah, I ate that X, Y, Z very late, which is not normal for me. So I had an uptick on the scale. So it's just those things. So journaling is very, very important. 
and you do need to journal to say that you've had a perfect day because it is that important. So component number one is drinking your water. Component number two is journaling. Component number three is secret alert, secret alert. This is one of the secrets of Shibboleth, okay? We're going to eat properly combined food, foods, or properly combined meals. Properly combined meals keep away the fat bus. The fat bus is a real thing. It is the hormone insulin, okay? Insulin is a growth hormone, and the specific type that it is, it's a fat storage hormone. So insulin, and we're gonna go over this in just a second, it has the name of the fat bus, okay? And we'll go over that. Component number four of a perfect day is to eat properly portioned meals from a six to eight inch plate using the two hand rule, okay? Now, I wanna explain something about the plate. It, the, eating off of a smaller plate fills your plate up so that your mind says you have plenty to eat. But honestly, you could eat off whatever size plate you want because your true measurement tools are your hands. You put them together as close as possible. You place them down over your food. And if you can't see your food sticking out around your hands, then you're good, okay? You are good. But if you can see it, you need to cut that off and just save that for another time. Now, so you can eat off whatever size plate you want. But the six to eight inch plate is for our mind to show us that, yes, we've got plenty on our plate and it's going to be satisfying. So there's a lot of little things that we need to do for ourselves that are just strategies that we do in order to make ourselves feel better mentally. So, but really our measuring tools are right here and we carry them with us everywhere we go. So if you go to that restaurant and they've given you that plate that that's big around, you just portion it. If you have to half everything on your plate, pull that off and put it into a, a to-go box, do that then and portion control. you get two meals out of that one meal. So component number one, water, number two, journal, number three, combinations of food, and number four, portion control. Those are the ones you have to hit in order to say you're having a perfect day. Oh, let's talk about this one again, portion control. The reason we need to portion control is because we are trying to get into a calorie deficit. To lose fat, we have to be into a, a calorie deficit. We need to get to a calorie deficit of 3,500 calories in order to lose one pound, one pound. So um, the quicker you're there, the quicker it, it is. But obviously we don't wanna restrict our calories to the point where it's unhealthy. We don't wanna do that. That's why you put number four, portion control, and you put number three, combinations of food together, you are supercharging your weight loss because calorie restriction will help you lose weight, but calories restriction combined with the uh, properly combined meals supercharges your weight loss, okay? Category five, Category five, component number five, I mean, sorry. Component number five of a perfect day is to eat just three meals a day, okay? And if you are a breakfast eater, you wanna eat within about an hour or two of waking, okay? Because you're fueling your metabolism. And then you're gonna eat lunch about four to six hours later, and then you can eat dinner four to six hours later. And you know, that sounds very reasonable. But a lot of us are used to grazing and we do not want you to be grazing. Grazing is for cows. Cows have four stomachs, four. We only have one and it's really probably no bigger than our hand. It's not that big, okay? So we wanna make sure that we are not grazing. So you wanna space out your meals because you need, your body needs time to digest those meals rather than just having food piled on top of food, piled on top of food, your body never gets a chance to digest, okay? So that is kind of the timing chart that you would wanna use. But the reason that we say that this one does not have to be hit just right is because everybody has different work schedules. Some people work 12 hour shifts, some people work first shift, second shift, overnight shifts, and you have to figure out what is best for you in your waking hours, your eating window, okay? but this is for optimization. All right, we really only want you to eat three meals a day. Three meals a day is plenty, okay? But allowed in moments of weakness, 
in mental weakness because it's not bodily weakness. Honestly, we could make it from breakfast to lunch, we give in. We could make it from lunch to dinner, but we give in, okay? So it's not, if we, if we know it's coming, we can make it. My number one freebie is water. I drink my water. Then, but let's just say that you just have to have something. If you do, we have what you need. Freebies, an extra, and a snack. Now, it's not optimal to do all of them because it adds up and it, it slows down your process to getting to that 3,500 calorie deficit. So right here, freebies. Freebies are would be your number one thing to go to because they have the least calorie impact and the least, um, well, blood sugar impact and calorie impact at all, freebies. So that'd be like egg whites, that would be sugar-free jello, dill pickles, um, and there's a lot of other freebies out there. Any category two, uh, vegetable is a freebie, so you can utilize those things. There's this uh, uh, advanced health systems bullion that we sell in the Shibby shop or the Shibboleth online store. You can get that and sip on it. It's tasty and everything, so you can do that as a freebie. And then there is something called an extra. An extra is typically between 30 to 90 calories, something like that. There's a whole list of those in the food library. And then we have something called a snack. Okay, snacks are no more than 200 calories, okay? But all of these things would have to be an approved freebie, an approved extra, and an approved snack. So if, if it were me, I would go through those um, categories in the food library and see the things that you might like to eat um, for those. But let's relate eating those back to component number four, our portion controls. Yes, we're gonna portion control like that. But I always talk about portion control in that 3,500 calorie deficit that we're trying to get into to lose one pound of fat. If you eat so many freebies in a day that they eventually add up, and the reason freebies are called free is because hopefully they wouldn't add up, but let's just say you ate so many that they added up to about 30 calories, all right? Let's say you chose an extra that's 70 calories. Well, that's 30 and 70 is 100. Let's say you ate a snack that was 200 calories. That's 300 calories so in a day that you may not have needed physically, that you physically may not have needed. You may have wanted it mentally. Your mind might have said you needed it, and then your taste buds, they might have wanted it, but you probably didn't really need it. So try not to give in to those. Freebies would be your best, and then if you need to go to those others, you can, but it's slowing you down if you do. So think about this. Are you willing to slow down your weight loss of one pound by 11.67 days? Because if you do an extra 300 random calories in a day that you do not need, you are slowing down your weight loss by 11.67 days. I think I'd rather give those up, get that weight gone, and then get into maintenance. Because when I got to maintenance, I did add a, an extra and a snack. I didn't do extras or snacks in, um, in weight loss, but now that I'm in maintenance, I can, I did the work, so I'm there. I can have an extra, I can have a snack. And I don't do them every day, it's just that I can now. But they are need, they are available if you need them. You gotta do what you can do. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna see who's watching on Facebook. Good, hey Joy and Stacy and Elaine. <laughs> And I'm, I, Julie says that she was having 365 holidays before Shibboleth. I was too. I didn't need 365 holidays. Hey, Dawn and Kay. All right. And Bo is drinking 150 to 165 ounces of water a day. That is amazing. Yeah, Kim, just uh, take pictures of your stuff. That's one way to journal quickly. Hey, Rachel and Bo, you could eat a jar of pickles if you needed it. You could. And Lisa, yay, I'm glad you like this information. Awesome, just wanted to take that little break. Those of you in the Zoom room, if you have a question to ask, please uh, set your chat to all panelists and attendees, and I'll be glad to say, uh, answer those questions. But thank you to those of you that have joined me in the Zoom room. Now what we're gonna do right now is we are gonna talk about component number three of the Shibboleth Shield, and this is one of the secrets of Shibboleth. We need to learn how to combine foods in a way that control insulin. 
in order to do that, you need to understand that we have seven categories of food. So seven categories of food. And this is basically all of our typical whole foods, not a lot of boxed foods and things like that. It's our typical whole foods. Category one is a lean protein. Category two is a fibrous carb. Category three is an energy carb. Category four is a protein plus fat. Category five is an antioxidant carb, AKA fruit. Category six is superfood. Category seven is shellfish. Okay. And then if you'll see my little note out there, it says, which is actually just a lean protein. So I'm gonna kind of give you some examples of what are in these, and then we're gonna go over uh, certain rules, all right? So category one and category seven are just a lean protein. They can be used exactly the same way, exactly the same way. So let's say in category one, lean protein, your egg whites are there, all your fish is there, Chicken breast is there, turkey breast is there, 96% lean ground meat is there, Oikos triple zero yogurt is there, and a variety of other things, okay? Down here, the shellfish, that's where uh, shrimp, mus mussels, oysters, scallops, uh, all those kind of things are right there. They're, they're both the same, but due to allergies and biblical reasons, some people do not wanna eat shellfish, so it just got pulled off of the number one, and so when you're looking at your combination chart, you don't even have to pay attention to sevens, okay, at all, if you don't eat shellfish. So category two is your fibrous carbs. So this is where you're gonna find your green beans, your broccoli, all your leafy green vegetables, your cauliflower, um, asparagus, all those kind of things. But category two has over 60 approved bread or bread type items in Shibboleth. Now this is one of the reasons that makes this program so sustainable. We do not exclude any macronutrients, we just tell you how to use them, but on this program you might need to switch over a bread you're using, you might need to switch over a tortilla that you're using, that kind of thing, but we do have over 60 approved breads and bread type items in this fibrous carb category, and this is one of the things that helps this program stay um, sustainable. Category three is an energy carb, an energy carb. It is where your potatoes are going to be. That's where your lima beans are going to be. Most of your light colored beans are there, but some of the other light colored beans do end up in superfoods. I'll go over that in a second. All of your peas are here, grits are here, this kind of thing. That's where your energy carbs are. Your protein plus fat is where your whole eggs are, your steak, any uh, most wild game or dark meat or meat with skin, like chicken with skin, that kind of thing. That's where your protein plus fat is. This is where your fruit is. All of your category five is antioxidant carbs fruit. Category six, this is where your superfoods are. How does a food make it into the superfood category? It is. It makes it into that category because it has all the macronutrients in it. It has water in it, it's got protein in it, it's got carbs in it, and it has fat in it. So if it has all four of those things in it, it's made, it's a superfood. Avocado is there, see garbanzo beans are there. So even though it's a lighter bean, it's still there because it's got all the macronutrients in it. And then that's where all of your dark colored beans are. And one of the uh, most popular items is Wendy's chili. The way that they make their chili is considered a superfood and it works. Not all chili works, but Wendy's chili does. Okay, so we have all of these seven whole foods. There are five of these foods that you could eat by themselves if you wanted to, by themselves. So category one, lean protein, you could eat it by itself. Category two, fibrous carb, you can eat it by itself. Category four, protein plus fat, can be eaten by itself. Category six, superfood, can be eaten by itself. And category seven, shellfish, can be eaten by itself. So five of the seven can be eaten by themselves. 
You just don't want to eat a category three energy carb or a category five fruit by itself, okay? Because those bring more of an insulin release and uh, part of the program that supercharges our weight loss is controlling insulin. And we're going to teach you how to do that. Now I'm going to stop right now because I see a question that has come up on the uh, Zoom room chat and she, Sarah says that she's confused about extras. Well, an extra is just a little something. It's just like I, a cocoa ringa. It's a little hot chocolate. It could be used as an extra. An extra just meets the qualifications of not having much of a blood sugar impact, but it's more calories than a freebie would be. So obviously it's less calories than a snack. It's more calories than a freebie. And I consider an extra just one of those little things that just pleases the tongue. You don't need an extra, but like if you did a Choco Right, uh, like Choco Right peanut butter patties, that would just be considered an extra. It's really just us trying to make the program sustainable for folks that just want a little something extra. <laughs> um, yes, Sarah, there is a list of extras in the food library. Yes, yes. And you could do one extra in a day if you needed it, but you really kind of want to stay away from those um, in weight loss. But if you, it's better to go to an extra than a snack because an extra is less calories than a snack. It's best to go to freebies and not even get to the extra or the snack. But it's really just a little something for you to eat that doesn't have much blood sugar impact and doesn't have many calories in it. Okay, Roni says that she didn't know that she could eat a category four by itself. And you've been in the program a while, Roni, so you're doing a refresher tonight. I don't know if you started when it was Thrive or not, but I think previously they said that you shouldn't do that, but you can eat a category four by itself. And I'm gonna tell you something, optimally, you would eat it with a category two, optimally. But you can eat a category four by itself, and I just say this, in a pinch, in a pinch. So skinny popcorn is probably, Ginger, is probably a snack. It's probably a snack, but I don't know. What you would want to do, Ginger, is you would look up skinny popcorn in the uh, food library, and then it's going to tell you X number of, X amount is an extra if it allows it to be an extra, and X number is a snack. So for example, with that Choco Rite example I used a minute ago, one packet, it has two little Choco Rite peanut butter patties in there, would just be an extra. But if you ate two full packets, it would be considered a snack. So Ginger, you would just need to look and see how much they say you can have of the skinny popcorn to qualify as an extra or a snack. Sarah, I hope that helped out. It was just, it's just a little, um, just a little something that else you can eat. But it does slow down the process because you are adding extra calories. But here's the other thing, whatever you do, don't give up a perfect day. Like let's say you've had three meals and you just cannot hack it. You cannot uh, just make yourself go to bed or something like that. Take advantage of the freebies first and then an extra and then a snack if you had to, because it won't bring you out of EFB. It is not optimal, okay? So it's legal, but it is not um, necessarily beneficial. But don't give up a perfect day because you're trying to stay away from freebies, extras, and snacks. You know, if you just, I wouldn't go to a bag of chips is what I'm saying. Utilize your, utilize the things that you have available to you. But you have to decide how fast you want this to happen. It's like, okay, do I want the scenic route or do I want to get on the interstate? So um, if you do the extra and the snack every day, you're basically taking the scenic route. And that's okay. You might enjoy the journey a little bit more. You can take the scenic route to get there. I wanted to get it off, so I just took the interstate, got where I was going, and then I added in an extra and a snack. Um, so Terry says, 100 calorie, 94% smart pop is a snack, fat free. Yes, and I'm not, I don't even know what that is, but if you, th this is the things that you guys find out when y'all look up the food in the food library that you personally like. See, here's the great thing about this program. We don't, we don't say you have to eat this, that, or the other. 
you get to figure out what you like to eat. And that's why it makes it so sustainable because nobody's telling you exactly what to eat. We tell you how to eat it and we give you the guidelines by which you need to eat it. See, the thing with me, I just needed somebody to kind of tell me the rules. And then, then I knew the rules and it worked. It definitely worked. Okay, let's have a look right here. Your fastest fat burning combination is a category one with a two or a category seven with a two. That is your fastest fat burning combination. You can ramp that fat burning up by cooking it in MCT oil, which we're gonna go over in just a second. But category one and two and seven and two are you gonna be your um, best and fastest fat burning combination. And that's kind of what I would stick with in the beginning. A four with a two is also good, but there are nine calories per gram of fat where there's only four calories per gram of protein. So you have a little bit extra calories in this one. But your four plus two would also be uh, good for fat burning, but a one and a two and a seven and a two are the best. So what that might look like is, let's say that you did chicken breast with some broccoli. It's that simple. Maybe you make yourself a 96% lean ground meat burger with some green beans. Or maybe you did some shrimp with some asparagus. So that would be, asparagus would be this. So maybe you do that, but it's really, really simple. So then your category four, you can eat by itself, but it's best to eat it with a category two. And the reason I say that you can eat a category four by itself is because let's say you wake up in the morning and all you've got in your refrigerator is some eggs. Just make yourself some scrambled eggs if you like eggs and then go to the grocery store later that day and get your stuff. Or maybe you are at an event. I go to a lot of luncheons. Maybe you're at an event and they've got um, the, the food out there, the buffet, and you go over there and everything's covered in sauce or you know nothing of it you would eat because it doesn't work on your plan, but they have a piece of chicken or they have a piece of steak. And I just eat the chicken or I just eat the steak and I move on. Now, optimally, if I was doing it at home, I'd go do my four with a two, but you can eat it by itself. So let's talk about this baby right here, these energy carbs. Let's say that you wanna have some lima beans, okay? Lima beans are gonna bring a little bit more of an insulin release than anything from this fibrous carb or the lean protein. So you have to pair them in the right way. So your amount on your lima beans would be about a quarter of a cup in weight loss, about a quarter of a cup. And so you're gonna do your hands like this, so your lima beans are gonna be sitting about right here. You're gonna have to put a fibrous carb right in here, so maybe some green beans, okay, or maybe some broccoli. Um, and then you can put a lean piece of lean protein under here, maybe your chicken. So you're gonna cover it up, and you're gonna put your hands over it, chicken under here, lima beans here, and a, a fibrous carb here, maybe green beans or broccoli or something. So I'm gonna tell you why you want to do that because I find that if you know the science behind this, this is super, super important. This is huge. Those lima beans are going to bring a little bit of an insulin release. It's just gonna happen. But you're allowing, by pairing these together, you're allowing the protein in the lean protein and the fiber in the fiber scarb to neutralize the insulin release that is coming from this energy carb. That right there is the secret because we need to neutralize insulin. Insulin is the fat bus, and we're gonna go over that when I talk about a four and a three, but um, insulin is a fat bus and we have to neutralize it. We are allowing the food that we've paired with it to neutralize that insulin. And it's basically like we've allowed food to be our medicine, which is great. So if you are going to eat a category three, you must eat it with a one and a two. Otherwise it would not, it would be a holiday. If you eat a category three and you're not pairing it with a one and a two, you have to consider that a holiday, okay? Because it brings an insulin release. Insulin, once it comes out in your body, it increases your appetite for up to 48 hours. All efficient fat burning stops for up to 48 hours and, um, and it's going to, it's going to uh, store fat for up to 48 hours. So this is why you've got to neutralize that insulin release by pairing anything from the category three column with a category one and a two. 
And it's the same thing with, you could also eat, you could, let's say you wanted the lima beans with a shellfish, that's okay. Because remember what I said, that a category seven and a one are the same thing. So you could do a seven and a two with a three, because it's the same thing. Okay, now let's talk about category four protein plus fat. Actually, before I go there, let's talk about this category five fruit. If you're gonna eat a category five fruit, you must eat that with a one and a two. So let's say that you wanna have some blueberries in the morning. You could do about a half a cup of blueberries and you could have maybe an egg white spinach omelet. Your egg, your egg whites are your lean protein, your spinach is your, uh, your fibrous carb. So you're allowing the protein in the egg whites and the fiber in the spinach to neutralize the insulin release from the blueberries. But honestly, if you, lose, if you use berries, they are gonna have the least uh, the least insulin release because they have the lowest glycemic impact on our body. But, um, but anyway, I just, I use them because, because I wanted to. Okay. So if you want to eat a category fruit, you category five fruit, you must pair it with a category one lean protein and a category two fibrous carb. So let's talk about this category four protein plus fat. Now I'm going to tell you what you don't want to eat it with. You don't want to eat your category four with your energy carbs, your fruit, or your superfoods. So basically what that looks like is, let's say you wanted some steak and some chicken on your plate, you would just choose to have that with a fibrous carb. You would not put an energy carb or any fruit on that plate. Let's say you wanted to have surf and turf. You could have um, crab or a lobster with some steak, but you're gonna choose a category two fibrous carbs. Maybe you order the broccoli well, at a restaurant, I'm assuming that. Surf and turf's usually at a restaurant. That's why I said that. Or maybe you do their, their, their salad, that kind of thing. But you're not gonna pair your protein plus fat with your energy carbs, your fruit, or your superfoods. I'm gonna talk about the classic plate at a steakhouse. Let's say you go to a steakhouse and you order steak and baked potato. So first of all, the baked potato is huge. So remember when I said those lima beans, you're, uh, I would gave the example of about of a quarter of a cup. Let's say you want some potatoes. In, the, in our world, you would only have about a quarter of a cup. But you order that at a restaurant, that's gonna be huge. It's about the size of your hand a potato is. You're gonna have a giant insulin release from that potato. And because you had a protein plus fat, you do have some fat lipids running around in your body. But guess what? That wouldn't even be a problem. Eating the protein plus fats, not the problem. The problem is that it got paired with the potato, the energy carb, or you got a longhorn, they bring that bread out too. It got paired with that. So just imagine eating all that bread that comes first, then the potato and the steak. That is just a bad combination. And that would be a holiday. You can still do that combination. It just won't work for weight loss and you need to call that a holiday, okay? So let's say you ate that steak with the potato. You have this insulin release that's coming out. You've got fat lipids roaming around in your body. Insulin's job is to go around and pick up fat lipids and store them. So it's just doing its job. It's going around, it's picking up the fat lipids and it is storing them. That's not what we want to do. We don't want to store we don't want to store energy. We want to burn energy. So we're not going to put that together. And I hope that knowing the science behind that makes you realize why you don't want to put that together. Okay. So if you're at a, at a steakhouse, instead of ordering the steak with a potato, and I use Longhorn as an example quite often because I like Longhorn, but I also like their broccoli. So if I would order a steak at Longhorn, I would just order their broccoli. Their broccoli is delicious. It is delicious. So guess what? You ate the protein plus fat. There's going to be some fat lipids running around in your body, right? No problem, because you didn't pair it with the potato. You paired it with the fibrous carb. No insulin came out to go pick up that fat that was from the protein plus fat. Therefore, you just live in your life, burning energy, burn that off, okay? Because there was nothing in there to store it. Amazing. Is that not amazing? I think it is. Y'all tell me if you think that's amazing. Okay. And remember I said you don't want to eat a protein plus fat with a fruit. So if you, in the morning, make yourself some whole eggs, 
you're not going to put fruit with it, all right? You're not going to put fruit with it because it's going to store the fat from the whole eggs. So we're not going to do that. And then you also don't want to eat your protein plus fat with your superfoods. So then the reason you don't is because do you remember how I said that superfoods have all the macronutrients? So it's got water, it's got protein, it's got carbs, and it's got fat. Well, because it's got more carbs in it than these other things, you just don't want to pair it with something where you're going to have a little bit more of an insulin release. Your superfoods, oh my goodness, they can be eaten with your fibrous carbs, they can be eaten with your shellfish, your lean protein, but you just don't eat your superfoods with things that are going to bring more of an insulin release and your protein plus fat. Yes, Meredith. Meredith asks, so to have an energy carb, you always put lean protein and a fibrous carb? Yes. If you don't do that, then it's just called a holiday. It's called a holiday if you don't. So in order to have a perfect day, yes, you must put your energy carb with a lean protein and a fibrous carb. Yep. Because you are neutralizing the insulin release from the energy carb with the lean protein and the fibrous carb. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. So basically, you need to know the seven categories of food. The seven categories of food, I just went around in my life. I was walking around in the house, I was standing in the shower, I was riding in the car going, one is a lean protein, two is a fibrous carb, three is an energy carb, because this is important. This is only the information you're gonna to need to know for the rest of your life. So it is important to go ahead and just put it into memory and learn it. So there are some, uh, what did I say this in? We already talked about that. Now, tomorrow night, there's going to be another webinar. It is going to be on just the simple food combining. So I want you to make sure that you register for that. So tonight, we're gonna to talk about the quickest and easiest. You're gonna familiarize yourself with the chart. The chart has three columns. It's good, better, and best, okay? But in the beginning, keep it really, really simple. Focus in on your lean protein with your fibrous carb cooked in MCT. Or focus in with the category seven shellfish, the fibrous carb and MCT. Throw in some meal replacements. I gotta talk about those real quick. And then start branching out with other combinations and other recipes. But in the beginning, just keep it super, super simple. All right? Uh, hey, Katinka, I'm glad that you like the information. It was just the information that was showed me why what I was doing before didn't work. And I just changed things up and lost weight. Now let's talk about a meal replacement real quick. Meal replacements, especially the ones that are the best for weight loss, because as in everything, there's good, better, and best. But the ones that are best for weight loss, um, we have something in our food library called the weight loss meter the weight loss meter. You can get your little um, weight loss meter to, it's on a sliding scale. It goes from a negative three to a three. Negative threes are better for weight loss. Anything in the negatives are better for weight loss. Anything in the positives aren't gonna take you out of EFB, but they're really a selection that's better for maintenance, okay? And zero is not gonna help you, not gonna hurt you. But if you do some negative two and negative three meal replacements in the beginning, that is going to help you with weight loss as well. And guess what it also does? Simplifies life. Simplifies life. I love a Mighty Muffin. I had a, actually, I did, I did a wow challenge today. I did a Mighty Muffin for breakfast and a Mighty Muffin for dinner. And I had a Zaxby's grilled chicken salad at lunch. But a Mighty Muffin is just a delicious little meal replacement. Before Shibboleth, I didn't even know what meal replacements were, what they were for. I have embraced a meal replacement and they work. They make, uh, they, they do very great for weight loss. And this is where I tell people, meal replacements brought chocolate back into my life. Meal replacements also make me feel like I'm not missing out on sweet stuff too, because these meal replacements often taste a lot like a dessert to me. So I never minded eating the dessert. So I might as well get it in a good 
good one that's got fiber and protein in it with low amounts of sugar that still tastes great. So keep it really simple in the beginning and do those combinations. So let's talk about this. Now this says when you're eating a category four that you can only eat it with a category two. Well, I wrote this before I was um, in the very beginning and I wanna make sure that you realize that you could eat a category four with a category one and you can eat it with a seven. You just don't wanna eat it with those other things I already said. The category three, energy carb, the category five fruit or the category six, superfood. And if you're eating a category three or a five, it must be eaten with a one and a two. It's an and, one and a two. But this information right down here is important. When you're at a restaurant, you need to consider all meat a category four. Even if it is a piece of meat that at home you would cook it, it would be a category one lean protein. So a piece of chicken, let's just say you think you're gonna go to a restaurant and say, I'm gonna stay with a one and a two. And but let's say you think I'm gonna have a piece of chicken because I can eat a category two and a three with it. See, the problem is at a restaurant, you don't wanna do that because you don't know what oil they cooked that chicken in. So therefore, you know that if you're gonna have a protein plus fat, that you should eat it with a category two, that tells you I cannot order that with a three or a five or a six. And I hope that makes sense because here's the way that that works. You take a protein plus, uh, I mean a lean protein, and you cook an unapproved oil into it, you have just turned it into a protein plus fat. So a protein plus fat is in a category four. So a piece of chicken can be turned into a protein plus fat when you cook an unapproved fat into it. So you're just gonna consider all meat at a restaurant a category four, and you would know just to order a category two with it. So that would be their vegetable medley, a side salad with approved dressing, something like that. I hope that um, is helpful. Okay, this secret alert, secret alert right here, MCT oil. This is very, very important. MCT oil is a medium chain triglyceride. What we were using before Shibboleth probably was an LCT a long chain triglyceride, which is olive oil, vegetable oil, canola oil, things like that. So a medium chain triglyceride is the best thing to use for um, your approved cooking oil. We do have some other options. Coconut oil would be your second best. It is 60% MCTs. Ghee butter, which is G-H-E-E, -E, it's a clarified butter. It is uh, your third choice. A lot of people use that when they need that butter flavor, like making a shrimp scampi or something like that. What is The ghee butter is a clarified butter. Once you've clarified the butter, there's more MCTs in it. So that's why it works. And then obviously you can use zero calorie cooking spray. This medium chain triglyceride has almost no propensity to be stored in the body as fat. It burns up like that. It just burns up almost immediately. In fact, when you are cooking, you need to cook on low to medium heat. It is, otherwise it will set off your smoke detector. So just the fact that I need to tell you that bit of information is important. The fact that it will set off your smoke detector tells you that it burns up quickly. So it burns up fast. If, if any of it does end up in your body because you cooked it into your food, it burns up fast. So there is no reason to worry about it. But those other things, the long chain triglycerides, they don't burn up fast. They take a long, 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 long time to burn up. And often they get stored because we are not expending enough energy in our daily life to burn them up. So they get stored. But if you are giving your body MCT, rather than LCT, there is nothing that's gonna get stored. Then when your body does need energy, it goes to your stored energy, which is fat. Um, MCT oil does help burn a few extra calories. Uh, Leticia, you can grill, no problem at all, you can grill, but MCT oil does help burn a few extra calories because it is thermogenic and it increases the temperature uh, in your body. And so you can, it burns up, 
calories. But you can do either way, but Travis does say the MCT is the fastest fat burning combination. And you could just use a little bit of MCT to flavor it and then grill with that. Now, people often ask, how much MCT do you use? Well, one tablespoon of MCT is a serving. I prefer that you guys purchase the zero drag 100% MCT oil from the Shibola store. And here's why, I'm not just trying to sell stuff from the Shibola store, but here's why. It's been maximized for cooking, and the others might not be have been maximized for cooking. Travis is only gonna pick out for the store what he thinks is the best for himself, and therefore he wants to share what he likes or his journey with us. That's why we have a store. These are the things that Travis has found that work and help him on his 20 year journey, and he just wants to share them with us. Also, I have looked at uh, the calorie count on our MCT oil. It only has 100 calories per one tablespoon. The other MCT oils that I see out in the stores that say 100% MCT oil have a 130 calories. Well, that's 30 more calories. I'm not sure since ours has been maximized for cooking or not, if that has something to do why there's less calories, but ours has less calories in it. So let's say you're cooking yourself one piece of chicken. You can use one tablespoon of MCT oil. If you're cooking four pieces of chicken, you could use four tablespoons of MCT oil. If you're cooking yourself some egg whites, I would not put in a whole tablespoon of MCT oil. It's gonna drown those egg whites. Just do a little drizzle just to get yourself enough in the pan to um, make it not stick. So, uh, but one tablespoon is all you need. Now, you're hearing me say that MCT oil is good. You're hearing me say that. What I don't want you to think that you should do is one, take it as a supplement. We do not take it as a supplement. We use it for a purpose and the purpose is cooking and we only use it for that purpose. So the other thing you don't do with it is you don't make bulletproof coffee with it. I didn't even know what bulletproof coffee was before Shibboleth, but it's when you put some oil in your coffee. We don't do that. We are not gonna, add 100 random calories as a supplement by itself. That's just 100 random calories that is not is preventing us from getting to that 3,500 calorie deficit. And we don't add it to our coffee, which is basically could be a zero calorie drink, depending on how you um, flavor your coffee. But so we don't do those things with it. It is truly used for the purpose of cooking. You can also use it in recipes. Um, so if you're cooking just an, in a pan, you can use it or you can use it for your recipes. So MCT oil is good. Now, MCT oil, by using that, this helps you not give your body easily accessible energy. So in weight loss, we want to access stored energy. Stored energy on our body is fat. That's what we're trying to get rid of. All fat is, is stored energy. So we need to be able to access that. So by using medium chain triglycerides that have no propensity to be stored on the body as fat, so therefore there's no easily accessible energy using this. Your body's gonna have to access stored energy. Also in the beginning, if you'll stick with the lean protein and fibrous carb and MCT, the shellfish, the fibrous carb, and MCT, if you'll stick with those and kind of leave out those uh, energy carbs in your fruit and your superfoods, you can do superfoods, but they, they're a little bit more easily accessible energy because especially fruit and your, um, your energy carbs, those are easily accessible energy. So when your body goes to need energy, if you've just recently put in some energy carbs or fruit, it's going to access that and burn that first. But if you haven't been given your body that energy, that type of energy, it has to go to the stored energy. Our whole goal is to get to the stored energy. So we don't give it easily accessible energy in the form of threes, fives, and MCT. I mean, and, and long chain triglycerides, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Because a lot of this stuff that you'll learn over time, you don't even have to know exactly why it is that you're doing it. But it all, just, do, just do what you know to do based on this information you're learning tonight. 
but it's all going to come together as this picture, this picture of why you're doing what you're doing. It's going to be really important. So basically, just don't bring the fat bus. The fat bus is eating an energy carb by itself, eating a fruit by itself. When you do those things or you have unapproved snacks and cookies and that kind of stuff, you're bringing the fat bus and any other fat lipids that you ingest is going to get stored. So you just don't bring the fat bus. We can have holidays on this program, but you have to remember that after a holiday, it takes two perfect days to get back into EFV. And if you will allow um, your mind to use your timing chart in your account, as a great visual, it would help you stay on track as you wanna see two green checks and then lots and lots of flames. And then after you have a holiday, you wanna see, you'll get a smiley face guy with a mask on there that he's the holiday icon. Then you're gonna see those two green checks and then you get back into those flames again. This is a life of balance. And if you will use that timing chart as a great visual, you will have great success and um, be able to get your mind to go where you want to go. So meal planning. Meal planning is really not that hard, but if you will look in the, if you're in the new member fast track group, there are some meal plans back from December that I set up. It doesn't matter that they were from December. They just, they're just that was the date that I pulled them. Go in there and look for some meal suggestions. Also, I have in there what I ate for the first 20 days. It's not a magical meal plan, but it will show you that it works because I lost 12 and a half pounds in that um, in those 20 days. But you're going to make yourself a list of 10 to 15 lean proteins that you like. If there's something on this program that you hear that you don't like, then don't put it on your list because we don't force anybody to eat anything they don't like. You make a list of 10 to 15 fibrous carbs that you like, and then you really just draw a line from one thing on that list to the other thing and like that. Just mix and match what you would want to eat together. Throw in some meal replacements for simplicity, and you really do have a meal plan. It's not that hard. And the last thing I wanna go over is all of our awesome, awesome resources. So we've got some amazing Facebook support groups if you're on Facebook. If you are on Facebook, make sure that in the new member fast track, you find that post that tells you which groups to join. Because it's amazing how many people I see haven't joined all the groups that they could join. So just find that po post and join those groups. Also, our website is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Your best friend right now is gonna be your video library to be watching videos, and you're, it's gonna be your food library. Those are what you're gonna use and the resources the most. You're gonna journal, and, um, and you're gonna look at your timing chart. Don't get overwhelmed with all the opportunities that we have in there, just keep it simple. And then we have our free mentor appointments. What I highly suggest that you do is you work your way through this week's Fast Track group. There's going to be a post that comes out every single morning in the Fast Track group. It, it's, it's a video of me showing you how to utilize the website, and it also gives you a little assignment. I would love for you to post the answers, like comment, comment on that post with the answers to show me that you are taking this seriously. I would love to know that. Then I would suggest that you book your mentor appointment, but I want you to book your mentor appointment for next week, not this week. The reason I want you to do that is I want you to go through the fast track this week. Then if you have additional questions, you can ask your mentor and it will help solidify the whole thing. So go through fast track this week, but go ahead and book your mentor appointment now, but for next week, because they do get a little booked up. So go ahead and book that at mentor.genbook.com. But focus on, that's what it says down there, focus on the fast track and for the next seven days. Let's see, it looks like I had somebody raise their hand earlier, but maybe not. Okay, so I hope that you learned something. Meredith, I would try not to have a holiday in the first seven days, yes, yes. Because a holiday, see, there, there's all these strategies about holidays too. So a holiday on our program 
you could really do whatever you wanted to all day. So you could have a hog trough day, but it's harder to recover from a hog trough day than it is just a hollow meal. So if you ate one meal that wasn't on plan, it's easier to recover from that. And I say that because it takes 48 hours for insulin to go out of your body. But if you don't have as much, it will dissipate faster than the 48 hours. We say the 48 hours to make sure, because we don't know what people are going to do. We don't know if they're having a hog trough day or they're having a hollow meal. Just easier to recover from a hollow meal. But Meredith, if it were me, I would look at my calendar for the month of March and I would say, am I going out of town? Because if you were going out of town, that's when I would schedule a holiday. And the next question I would ask myself is, do I have a, a birthday, an anniversary, or another special day that I might need to schedule a holiday? I wouldn't just plan a holiday just for the heck of it, because the food that we get to eat on this plan is good. I mean, I'm not suffering on a perfect day. I save those holidays for days that I have less control over what I eat. So awesome, awesome, very good. Y'all let me know if you have any questions. I'm gonna check the Facebook group real quick. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll look at that. Hey, Danielle, please post that MCT oil in the Shibboleth Fix It group because I want Kim Shibboleth to give you the official answer on that, but you can tag me because I would love to see what her answer is. Hey, Joy. Uh, Belinda asks, says, can you ask them to dry grill? So let's say that you want a piece of chicken at a restaurant and you ask them to dry grill it. If you ask them to dry grill it where there will be no oil on there, you could still consider that a category one. The benefit of doing that is that you could probably have a little bit of category three with it at a restaurant. But see, that's, that's kind of scary because you don't know what they put in that category three either at restaurants. A lot of sneaky calories get into um, mashed potatoes and other things like that. But yeah, you could ask them to dry grill it. That's funny. So Lisa asks, um, is staying between a negative three and negative one the best for weight loss? It is, it is. Awesome. Well, y'all, I hope that you enjoyed tonight. Sheila, you cannot remember your username and password. I'll tell you what, if you will email me, actually, yeah, email me at So Sheila, if you will email me at kim.danke at myshaboleth.com, I just put the email right there. Email me there and I will email you back, but you need to email me what you want your password to be. Because I can't see your password, I'll have to set a new one. And Ginger, we have approved cookies. So maybe you should get some approved cookies for your granddaughter to eat when she is over there. See, this is that type thing that I really wish that people, and Ginger, you were in class yesterday, so you heard me say this, but I wish people would teach this to moms with toddlers and stuff like that, so that it's just, it, moms care, you know, about what their kids are putting in their mouth. They just need to switch over a few products because there's so many good products out there. You're welcome, Sheila. You're welcome, Katinka. That's awesome. Well, I'm going to let y'all go tonight. I'm going to be putting in there the, the next webinar link for tomorrow night. So there's two live webinars, this one and tomorrow night at eight. And then there's a post every single morning through Saturday. And I want y'all to work through those because if you work through those, then you will be learning the program. And if you start tomorrow, I truly believe you can lose seven pounds in seven days. 
and that will be such a great start. Awesome. Thank you, Becky. Thank you. Thank you, Roni. And we're going to hop off. Bye, guys.